I'm out on the deck with Maria, and today just happens to be National Umbrella Day. So Maria is going to help us celebrate with a DIY that is just right as rain. <laughs> right, Maria? And right as Maria. Exactly. <laughs> I love an, a rainy day. I do. I, you? I it's do. so much fun. And I will tell you, kids love rainy days, too. too. So JJ and Grant, my two boys, they got umbrellas for Christmas. So Aww. I want to show you. This is the, the cutest thing. Look at JJ. It's Baby Shark. Oh, so boy. So he loved it. You oh, my see, gosh. I, you can't I, even see him. I know. And you can see I have my Hallmark sweatshirt on, oh, by yeah, the way, or sweater. Um, but, yeah, he loved it. This is, here's the thing. When it's a rainy day, oh, a rainy gosh, season, so which we're just coming into, uh, you need a place to put your umbrellas. And I feel like we always throw ours in the closet or they get lost and, and they're always need falling it for, out of yeah, the closet exactly. and, or they're in the car and you they don't make have a mess. it. <laughs> yeah, they, and, and they make a mess or they're sitting outside getting ruined. So yeah. I wanted to create something that where you can put your umbrellas and it, it's aesthetically beautiful and you can make these however your aesthetic is in your home. Make them chic like this. You can make them rustic, anything. And not only that, it's going to help um, save the integrity of your floors. Absolutely. So, you know what I mean? Okay, Absolutely. so let's get started. What do we do first? Okay, so these, Deb, we had a plethora of these around our house. These are just little, like, box uh, shelves, little box frames. You can see they sell them at, like, Ikea home stores. Uh, so I decided to use this as my base. Okay. So what you do is you actually flip it over, okay. and I'm going to sand it down a little bit because I'm actually, and I did a little bit of this already, but I am going to be adding a base to it, and I'm going to be adding uh, it with glue. So right. I'm just using a Gorilla Glue. This is plywood. So I'm adding it onto the sides. And actually, can you that for me yes. while I do this. So you get it cut, uh, Deb, by either a, a table saw or you could use a jigsaw as well. Like the one, the hexagon shape I have over okay. there is done with uh, a jigsaw. Uh, it doesn't matter because we're okay. going to seal it no matter what. And so they'll this do it is at the hardware store for you too, won't they? Exactly. And if you have a little bit of extra, make sure you have like a towel okay. to, to wipe down. And I would actually give this uh, maybe another minute, but I'm going to clamp it down anyway. So okay, these clamps are great. So you can get these at the hardwood store. Um, and what you do is, oh, hardware store, it. not how, hardwood store. Let me get it straight for there you. There we go. There Thank go. you so much. You're welcome. And so what you do is then clamp it down and you would get these in, bring it out a little bit. Okay, so what you do is you would uh, get these in um, a pack there we of go. like 15. There we go. And so here's the thing, I would do the other side too. Just to keep it in place. Yes, exactly. And how long are we going to let this dry? So we are going to let this dry. I would give this, it takes a few hours to dry. Okay. Um, and then, that I'm, actually, I'm just going to set it down like this. Okay. I would do both sides. All but right. you can see one is actually going to work really well. I would do two, though. But give it a couple hours to dry. It takes 24 hours then to cure. Okay. So then you would move on to your next step. And this is where we are right here. And now we're so, going to put the sides up, right? Yes. Yeah, so you can see the the uh, base of this is actually white because I sprayed this with um, oh. a leak seal. Also, like a flex seal is going to be called that as well. What you do then, you want to work in a well-ventilated area, same with the glue, and what I would do is then spray it because what it does is then it just seals it so that the water's not going to seep through it doesn't and get it's moldy. not going to ruin the wood, mm -hmm. all of the things that you need. And I do this, you could do the bottom too, you can see I was testing it out there, but you don't necessarily need to. You do there. And then like you said, you add the sides. Now we add the sides. Mm -hmm. So I would do the same thing where I would add a little bit of texture okay. with the sand, uh, sandpaper. So the sandpaper just gives the glue something to kind of grab onto because this is more more like smooth, sealed and right. yeah. So I do a little bit of that. I measured two inches in, and then I did the center of the the one by two right here. So as you can see here, it's off uh, center from this. So both of these, you can see this other one would go on right here, okay. and it kind of creates that cool like off center geometric. Type and it of thing. is important to have these um, these grip clips, right? I recommend that. I feel like there's no other way you could really do it. Here, let's move it up a little. I mean, with this maybe, because you could put books on top of with it. With that one, you could do, yeah, with that one, you could do books. With this one in particular, I would say, and see, we're all set. You can leave this out like this, and I would repeat this with the other side when I do this, and you can clamp the bottom. Then, Deb, give it after 24 hours. Another 24 hours. Okay, another so 24 hour, hours here. We go. here. So we this is not like a day of project. You would do the top, and you would do it in the same way. So you can see this is what it ends up looking like with the clamps. So you no. would want to do the in the, these steps, but it's important to let it cure. Okay, and I think it's also important to point out that we that you should invest in these clamps. Every time I'm doing a project like this, I think, oh, I'll be able to do it without, and you, honestly, it's almost impossible to do something like this exactly. without these clamps. Exactly. And they're not that expensive. They are not. You can get like a okay. bag of them at the hardware store for $15 uh, roughly speaking. So that's where it's not a big deal at all. So would you paint these after? 
I would paint them after. Okay. So this is where we're at. It's already painted, but once it's all together, cured and sturdy, then I would paint it. So what I did for this in particular, because I was working with a base that was already really uh, clean, sleek, and had that kind of like, uh, you know, already not, this is not rough at all, sure. like the wood is. I want okay. the wood to match it. So right. what I did is I got a white spray paint that has a primer in it, because that's going to fill the creases of the wood. Okay. So it looks cohesive. Uh, so that's what I, and you want to make sure it's like, you know, an outdoor one as well, because it's going to withstand the, the the wetness of the umbrellas. Okay, and so then, then we fill, it we fill it with river rocks. These are river rocks. So the thing about the river rocks, you can see I, this is um, the the sort of geometric shape one, the hexagon I have here. Uh, so that's where I have the river rocks at the bottom. And to figure out your sizing, Deb, it's going to depend on your umbrellas. So right. if you have some really tall uh, golf umbrellas, I would bring this up a little bit more. But if you have some like kids umbrellas, I would do with like a general size that you can hang them on. And I see you've and also so, added moss over there. So just this is very decorative to add the rocks and the moss, but it's also really functional. It's really functional. So here's the thing. I, with We're sort of in a time where we are sort of craving that spring very, like, beautiful feel, the, light, the, the, the like, new life of spring, right, I guess is exactly. the best way to put it. So the, this is live moss. You can just put it in the bottom, and actually the water from the umbrellas mm -hmm. will water it. That's and that right. adds that nice, beautiful element of spring that we're sort of all craving right now. And, oh uh, and then your rainy day is just... You know, you can brighten up your rainy day. Exactly. You could, you know what? Also paint this different colors or have the kids. The kids draw could decorate it. it afterwards with so many different things. And then guess what? We'll all be singing in the rain. We will. I wish it rained <laughs> more here in Southern Me California. Too. We need more rain, you guys. Thank you, Maria, for full instructions. You guys can head on over to HallmarkChannel.com.